Hello there, this is Juliet Pradon. I'm going to be uh, giving you a webinar on the introduction to gold, uh, which is our protein ligand docking package here at the CCDC. And I will be finishing off that with a demo uh, of how to use gold in Hermes. So first of all, a little bit uh, about uh, what a docking program actually does. So a docking program is an algorithm that generates reasonable binding poses of a candidate ligand in the active site. It consists of two parts. One is the actual pose generation step, and the second is the pose evaluation step, which uses a scoring function. I must point out uh, one of the limitations uh, of docking programs is that they are not able to calculate binding affinities. Rigorous affinity calculations are difficult, time-consuming and require exhaustive sampling of states to treat entropy properly. Docking algorithms must be fast. They are designed to evaluate many thousands of candidate structures at any given time and therefore scoring functions are approximative. It may be possible to get a correlation with the binding affinity in some active series, but you have to be careful not to push such correlations too far. For example, it could be the size of the ligand that is correlated with the fitness score. In terms of the primary uses of a docking program, first of all, there is the identification of reasonable binding poses for an active molecule. This informs the development of a structure-activity relationship and is very valuable for deciding the next direction of molecular design. Docked poses are useful starting points for carrying out more sophisticated calculations to probe the binding event or to calculate the binding affinity. These types of calculations are QMMM calculations and molecular dynamics calculations. One of the primary use of a docking program is to screen many thousands of candidate ligands in silico, what we call virtual screening. In that case, it is important to use docking as part of a screening funnel that means you do not trust the scoring function alone. Gold, the docking program, is distributed as part of the gold suite. The gold suite contains, first of all, gold for the protein ligand docking, but it also contains Hermes. Hermes is the 3D visualizer, which is also used for pre- and post-docking purposes, and for the interactive docking setup. I will show how to use Hermes uh, as the wizard for gold in the demo. Hermes is also our Relibase Plus client. Additionally, it provides access to other CCDC software such as Isostar, Superstar and Mogul. Finally, the last part of the gold suite is Gold Mine. Goldmine is used for the post-processing of docking results. The gold docking algorithms. The gold docking algorithm, initially the pose generation occurs through the matching of pharmacophore points. These are also called fitting points. It's the matching of the donor acceptor fitting points between the ligand and the protein but also hydrophobic interactions. Gold uses a genetic algorithm for searching the binding space and the ligand conformational space. The best poses are kept and mutation or crossover operations are applied to the chromosome defining the ligand placement or conformation. Finally, scoring functions are used to rank poses. This is a little bit more information about how the genetic algorithm is able to simulate the Darwinian evolution. Number one, 
an initial population of random individuals is created and their fitness determined. Then, a genetic operator is chosen. It can be mutation, crossover, or migration in island model. Then, the parents required by the operator are chosen using roulette wheel selection which is based on the scaled fitness. This is what we call selection pressure. Then, the operator is applied and the child chromosomes are produced. The fitness of these child chromosomes is evaluated. Then, if not already present in the population, these children replace the least fit members of the population. This is termed niching. Then, if N operators have been applied, then you stop, otherwise you go back to step 2 and repeat the process. And finally, there is an optional step where there is a local search which is done on the best individual. Gold has a set of automatic settings. When you select automatic settings, this will calculate this n number of operators based on the ligand size, the flexibility and the number of waters. Now, a little bit more information about the goal scoring functions. There are currently four scoring functions in gold and one rescore only function. The first one, gold score, this is the original scoring function, the first one to have been developed. It is made up of four components, protein ligand hydrogen bond energy, a protein ligand van der Waals energy, a ligand internal van der Waals energy, and a ligand torsional strain energy. Chem score. Chem score was derived empirically from a set of 82 protein ligand complexes for which measured binding affinities were available. Unlike gold score, the chem score function was trained by regression using measured affinity data, although there is no clear indication that it is superior to gold score in predicting affinities. So the first two scoring functions I have mentioned, these are traditional scoring functions which are based on force fields or on regression, where the parameters are derived from a set of experimental binding affinities and structures. So the third scoring function in goal is the Aztec's statistical potential. This scoring function uses a different approach. Here, information about the frequency of interaction between the ligand and the protein atoms is gathered by analyzing existing ligand protein structures in the protein data bank, and this information is used to generate statistical potentials. The fourth scoring function available in gold is called ChemPLP. This is a hybrid scoring function. It, is, it contains uh, a consensus score that combines elements of chem score and the PLP scoring function, which stands for pairwise linear potential. And this PLP scoring function models the steric complementarity between the protein and the ligand. Finally, ChemScore RDS is a final scoring function, but this one is only used for rescoring. This one rewards the burial of groups in subpockets. So very often we are asked the question which scoring function should be used when? In general, gold score is generally very good and it is particularly good for polar binding sites. We tend to recommend ChemScore for lipophilic binding sites. The Aztec statistical potential scoring function performs well, but we have found that it might best be employed in rescoring experiments. 
ChemPLP is very fast and possibly also more accurate than GoldScore. This is the reason why it has become the default scoring function in Gold and we recommend that in the first attempt you try using ChemPLP over other scoring functions. ChemScore RDS has also been found to be very useful when you are rescoring virtual screening runs. Finally, I should mention that there are target specific parameters. For example, there are parameters which have been developed for the heme group in the cytochrome P450, but also for kinases, and there are also some template virtual screening protocols. And finally, I also need to mention that you can define your own scoring functions using the gold scoring function API written in C, C++. So, let us consider the ligand and how the ligand uh, is searched for different confirmations during docking. Gold inherently deals with ligand flexibility. So this includes fully rotatable bonds. It also includes the flipping of planar nitrogens, as well as ring corner flipping. There is also this ring templates. This is a new option, which allows the sampling of ring conformations which are derived from the CSD, although they can also be user defined, during the docking run. Using this knowledge-based ring geometry libraries has been shown to be able to improve both pause prediction and score. The ligand confirmations can also be scored by an internal force field, which is referred to as an internal energy offset. By applying this correction, the internal energy will be calculated with respect to that of a close to optimal non-bound structure, thereby taking into account any irreducible internal energy. Finally, torsion angle distributions, which are extracted from the Cambridge Structural Database, are utilized by gold. These distributions are used to restrict the ligand conformational space sampled by the genetic algorithm. Metals. Gold is fairly good at handling metals and automatically assigns a geometry during protein initialization. As long as metals have at least two coordinating protein groups, gold can automatically pick the most appropriate coordination geometry. Coordination geometry templates, such as tetrahedral, oxahedral, are superimposed onto the metal and coordinated protein atoms, and the lowest RMSD template is selected to generate further coordination points. If gold doesn't get it right, although generally it is very good, or if you have a geometry that the metal must absolutely have, you can override gold's metal geometry and specify your own geometry explicitly. Alternatively, for awkward geometries, such as square planar, you can define your own geometry. I mentioned earlier something about modeling water molecules. In gold, it is possible to model water molecules which is very important because water molecules, as you probably know, can play a key role in ligand binding by mediating interactions between the ligand and the protein. A water molecule can be displaced by an appropriate ligand and we have to take that into account and somehow model it in gold. Therefore, there have been switches which were added into the chromosome if you specify you would like that option and these switches can they can change the state of the water meaning the water is either present or absent 
during docking. You can also change the relative orientation of the water, which is equivalent to spinning the water molecule. And finally, waters can also be allowed to move. This is the trans-spin option, and waters in that case can move by up to one angstrom. The fitness, correcting by a penalty for the loss of rigid body entropy of the bound water. Okay, there are now two ways, two approaches to deal with the protein flexibility. When you want to define up to 10 side chains as flexible, you can do that using side chain rotamers. There are rotamer libraries which are implemented in terms of chi angles. The specified side chain torsions are able to adopt either specific angles or an angle from within a range of movement. Side chain and protein clashes are accounted for, and the user has control of any additional energy penalization. Using side chain rotamers when appropriate, raise the post prediction success from 50 percent to 73 percent and this is the pose prediction is deemed successful when a ligand is within two angstrom of what it should be. The library rotamers are not developed here instead they are taken from the penultimate rotamer libraries which is published in the paper mentioned at the bottom of the slide. So the very first approach to the protein flexibility is this one. But when you want to include the movement of the protein backbone as well, you use ensemble docking. In these cases, when you have, you can have several structures in the PDB for the protein of interest. And the question is, how can you pick, or rather, can you pick the right protein structure? If you pick the worst structure, as seen in red, in the bars on the graph on the left hand side, you might not get a very good AUC. If you pick the best structure, you might get a much better AUC. But it is very hard to know which structure to pick. So the question is, would it be better to pick multiple protein structures? The answer is yes, in most cases when you use the gold ensemble docking, in many cases the performance is going to be better with ensemble docking than with the average of single structures. Additionally, there is this advantage that there is a one to four times speed up over sequential docking. I should mention that to use the ensemble docking in gold, requires a set of superimposed protein structures. This can all be set up in the Hermes GUI. The ensemble docking approach searches all protein conformations concurrently, and it requires a modified genetic algorithm to treat these protein ensembles. Okay, so now I will do the, uh, the demonstration part. Um, so, having loaded up Hermes, uh, you can access gold via this top level menu here where it says gold, you press on gold, and we're going to set up and run a docking. Uh, we're going to create a new configuration file, and we're going to use the wizard. So, in the first step that we have to select uh, which protein we want to use, so we load the protein. Let me navigate to where I have saved a protein file. This is a PDB file here, 1acm.pdb. I click open, then I do next. It then tells me that I need to do three things to the proteins. Uh, add hydrogens, configure uh, the water molecules and deal with the ligands. To do that I need to go onto the protein tab. This is the tab here which has uh, appeared 1ACM which is the name of the protein. If I click on it I am presented here first of all with uh, the option to add hydrogens. 
This is very important. Gold uh, absolutely requires that both the protein and the ligand uh, have all the hydrogen atoms added to it, otherwise it cannot work. So if I press add hydrogens, it now tells me that 7192 hydrogens have been added. So I press OK. Um, I then need to deal with the water molecule, so I go to the second option here, extract delete water molecules. Because none of the water molecules in this case are interacting, uh, are mediating any interactions between the ligand and the protein, I can delete all of these water molecules. So I select this option, delete remaining waters. I click OK and it tells me that 15 water molecules have been deleted. Then I need to deal with the ligand. I need to go to this delete ligand option on the left. Okay, the reason why we need to delete the ligand is because in this case this is not just a protein file, this is a protein ligand uh, complex and therefore we need to delete the ligand from the binding site otherwise uh, gold will not be able to dock in a ligand in the binding site because the binding site is not free. So the ligand that I'm going to extract and reload is ligand A. I put a tick box in here, I put a little check mark and click extract. It now prompts me to save this ligand into an intelligent location I'm going to save it as ligand1acm and it is saved as a mol2 file. Okay, now briefly going back uh, to Hermes itself, if I go back to Hermes and I click on view protein explorer, this, and then I move this window a little bit further away. This now uh, turns on the protein explorer uh, in Hermes. This allows me to let me look at the whole protein in greater detail. I can twirl it around. So the protein here, this is the protein file that we loaded up initially containing uh, some chains, some ligands and some water molecules. If I untick this box you can see that the whole thing goes away. And this A1ACM, this is the ligand that was added uh, when I extracted it and reloaded it. This is the ligand which is here in green. So if I use this tick box you can see that it is just the ligand. Okay, going back to the setup window. I am now ready to press next and deal with the remainders of the options. Now step 3 I need to define the binding site. There are several options for defining the binding site. Um, I could have selected simply an atom in the visualizer. Uh, I could have used uh, the XYZ coordinates to define uh, a point. And I could also have used one or more of the ligands. This is the option that I'm going to choose here. So if I click on this radio button here, it turns on this option. And if I click, this is the ligand that I'm interested in using to define the binding site. This is ligand A. Um, and this is the ligand in binding site A, which has been extracted and reloaded. So if I click on this ligand here, and if I go back to the binding site, I hope that you can see that in purple is most, most of the protein. And this is the residues that are not part of the binding site. But you have some residues here in, per in uh, grey, and these are the residues included in the binding site. These are the residues that are within 6 angstrom of the ligand because I've selected the ligand and I've set that all atoms within 6 angstroms are used f to define the binding site. I can then click next. There are some configuration templates which are available uh, but in this particular instance they are not useful so we're not going to use any of them. I then let need to select which ligand. So in this particular instance I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to dock uh, a ligand back into its native protein. So I'm simply going, I've extracted one of the ligands and I'm going to redock it into the binding site. Uh, 
So if I press add here and then I navigate to where I have saved uh, this ligand. So I saved it in Gold Webinar and I called it ligand1acm and it was a mol2 file. So I open this ligand automatically. The, this is the default option that there would be 10 genetic algorithm runs which are going to be requested for this particular ligand. This is perfectly appropriate in this instance, so I'm going to leave it as that. If I click Next, I'm now, selected with, I'm now presented with the option to choose a fitness function. As I mentioned before, Gold has several. There has four fitness function and one rescore only fitness function. Um, and the default scoring function is this chem PLP scoring function. But the other ones are available by clicking on this little box here. I could have selected the, go the chem score, the gold score, or the ASP, uh, Aztec statistical potential scoring function, as well as a user defined scoring function. In this case, the chem PLP scoring function is the default and is appropriate for a docking, so I will leave it here. If I clicked on this more button, this suddenly uh, drops down all these uh, all these different options here. Uh, all these default options are appropriate uh, for this particular demonstration, and I'm going to point out in particular that the allow early termination option is ticked on. If I click on the button here, it explains that what this termination option here he is. It means that if these top three solutions are within 1.5 angstroms of each other, then the genetic algorithm will terminate instead of running all the way up to what I requested to be 10 genetic algorithm runs. So this is appropriate. I can close. I can now click next to go to the genetic algorithm search options. Again, the default is chosen for you here, being the slow or the most accurate, and this is perfectly appropriate here. Uh, but I, if I click more, I have access to other options here, such as changing the search efficiency. If I click next again, I'm now presented with the option to run gold. However, I'm not going to run gold immediately by pressing this button. I need to do just one more thing. So I need to click on this advanced button at the bottom here. And then I need to go in this list of options on the left hand side to output options. I now need to specify the output directory for my results. Currently it is set to be, I believe, in uh, one of the installation folders for gold, but really it's not appropriate. It's likely that this is possibly a place where you do not have read and write permission. So I'm going to put the output directory as the gold webinar folder that I have created on my desktop. So I can navigate using this button here. I navigate all the way here to the gold webinar. I click OK and now we can see that all my output is going to go into this folder here. Now I am ready to run gold. So I simply press the run gold button at the bottom here and this will launch it. But before launching it, it actually prompts me to save certain files. First of all, it prompts me to save a gold configuration file. This gold.conf file is very important. It contains every single item that I have asked in the wizard and therefore it acts as a summary of what the calculation has been asked of gold. It is also very useful because it can be used to set up a new docking using some existing settings. Furthermore, it is also asking me to save one of the proteins. Well, this is because we have changed, we have edited this protein. I, if you remember, we have added hydrogen atoms and we have also deleted some water molecules. So the protein file is going to be saved with these changes included. So if I click Save now, there we go. It has launched the Run Gold uh, GUI. If I go to the Messages here, the Messages tab, it says that it is starting the Gold Run. I can look at all these different tabs, for example, here this is the tab for the error messages. Uh, there are uh, some uh, a tab for the gold protein log, there's a tab for the gold log, 
And if I go back to this list of ligand log, there is this item which has appeared here, and this is the log for the docking of the ligand called ligand1ACM into the protein. If I click on it, it opens up in a new tab here and contains all kinds of information about the docking. First of all, um, we can see that just here it says final ranked order of genetic algorithm solutions 231. This tells us, first of all, that uh, there are only three solutions that have been saved by gold. This is because of the early termination option which was ticked on. This means that these three solutions are within 1.5 angstrom RMSD of each other and therefore the genetic algorithm stopped. What this also tells us is that solution 2 is ranked above solution 3 which is ranked above solution 1 in terms of the score. So there's a, button at the there's a button at the bottom called View Solutions. If I tick that button here, if you have noticed here, on the left-hand side in Hermes, in the Protein Explorer, we suddenly have a new tab called Docking Solutions, which contains these three solutions here. I'm going to first of all close this, and I'm going to minimize this. OK, so currently we can see the protein here, and the protein contains this ligand in green, which is the original ligand. I'm going to display that ligand in a slightly different color, just for ease of viewing. So if I go back to the display, and it is this ligand, 1ACM, if I click that ligand and I go to Color, Custom Carbon, I'm going to pick the custom carbon to be colored in yellow. If I click OK, now in yellow here, this is the original ligand. This is the ligand that I'm asking gold to dock back into uh, its protein, and this is its original position, its uh, crystal structure position. OK, if I go back to the docking solution tab here, you will notice that the three solutions, one, two, three, are not currently ranked by their fitness score. If I click on this column here, there we go, it is now ranked by decreasing fitness score. In gold, a higher fitness score means a better docked pose. If I click on the first one, it now is added, and you can see in green, this is the docked solution. It is in fact very, very close to the original crystal structure position in yellow. I can cycle through all of these and you can see that the solution is a little bit different each time, but really not that different. That's because they're all within 1.5 angstrom RMSD of each other.